Hey guys, um, this is Joanna White here. Um, I thought I would do something new. I've never tried this before. Um, sort of a video diary of my writing process. Um, so currently, obviously this is going to contain spoilers for my series called The Mystic Series. Blood the Secrets is book one. It is free to read on Wattpad.com. It is also on Amazon for $2.99. Um, the whole book is on Amazon right now. And on Wattpad, the free to read version of it is a new chapter is released every Friday. So if you'd like the whole book, um, I would recommend buying it on Amazon. The links will be in the description of this video. Um, that is book one. Um, because Blood of the Secrets has not fully been released on Wattpad yet, um, the second book in the series called Unveiled Truths, which is a book that I've just recently finished writing a couple of days before Christmas, um, is not available to anyone yet. Um, so basically the, um, yeah, like I said, this is going to contain spoilers for this. So basically the storyline um, is that in Bloodless Secrets, um, the Ur it's sort of Earth, but with supernatural creatures, werewolves, vampires, um, sirens, mermaids, um, you know, uh, fairies, uh, fae, they're called the fae, um, which is basically fairies, elves, gnomes, and kitsune, those are good, um, and then there's dark fae, which is basically goblins, orcs, um, uh, gorgons, and stuff like that. There's also valkyries and gargoyles, which are, is a new type of creature that has been tweaked. Um, there's other lycanthropes, like werewolves, there's also were-bears, were-cats, and were-hyenas. Those are the only four types of lycanthropes. Um, so basically the world, um, humans don't know about the existence of mystics, which are, mystics are supernatural creatures. Um, so, but there is a secret government organization called FUMI, the Federal Unit of Mystic Investigation, um, that is, hunts mystics in secret, um, to experiment on them, to study them, to learn more about them. And in Bloodless Secrets, um, Keske and his friends, they have to rescue some people, and, uh, meanwhile, the girl Emelina, um, she's a human girl in college, and she finds out about the existence of mystics and goes on, kind of gets roped into this whole bigger world than she ever thought possible. Um, Unveiled Truth picks up where the cliffhanger in Bloodless Secrets leaves off. And in this book, the gist of the whole storyline is that mystics have been revealed to the human society, so it's about how humans cope with the existence of mystics and what the government world here in the United States does and worldwide. Um, there's also the plot line going on with the characters and what they're dealing with, which I'm trying to omit as many spoilers as possible. Now I'm planning the third book in the series, which is will show you kind of my writing process and everything. So basically I already have um, kind of a, a general idea of what I want to have happen in the book three of the Mystic series. Again, this book does not have a title. Um, basically, Unveiled Truths, book two, kind of led my characters into this whole situation. So a lot of the scene ideas that I have is simply just like getting them through that situation and sort of where the plot line has taken me simply because it is the third book in a series. Um, so basically, the United States and worldwide uh, generally has developed um, basically like concentration camps for mystics, and they're locking them all in there. Um, some of my characters are in the camp, and the other characters, one of them is going to be have changed her identity and her appearance a little bit so that she can sneak in there to see the other character that's in the concentration camp. Um, I have a few scene ideas inside there, so... And, of course, the, the character who's undercover, um, she's going to be working with um, the, uh, the people who run the concentration camp, um, and they're going to have her. Um, because vampires are a very old race, so the government sees this as a, a way of eye, eyewitness accounts to historical to history and not instead of just like relying on you know historical written record and stuff so they start questioning the vampires to try to find out well what era were you turned in what happened what took place and kind of get the real history what happened along with like the actual history and then how mystics fit into history because the government's only known about mystics since about world war ii so it, it hasn't been very long in the grand scheme of things because vampires are a very ancient i mean i have ancient roman vampires and stuff like that so some of the characters I'm going to be inventing along with the um, people
people who are running the camp, the people who work at the camp. I need a few characters there. Um, I need more vampire characters that are older. Um, basically any vampire I can think of that has been rounded up. Um, I, what I do is I invent a lot of characters just so I have plenty, one, I love doing it, and two, just so I have plenty of characters to choose from. Like if I need my character who's undercover to be interviewing an, a vampire, I can pick out one from the list that I have of extras and basically I don't have to worry about inventing it there and along with that I can have fun doing the process now. So I do have a lot of characters made. Um, I actually use Pinterest to invent characters a lot and um, I have a lot of boards on my Pinterest as you can see. Um, the character inspiration board is for um, fantasy type characters um, so that's all strictly artwork um, and inspiration is more just I like the concept of the character but it's not exactly like exactly like I would imagine the character um, now I have another board similar to that that's again for fantasy characters only that's artwork and stuff but those are character ideas and that board is the one where oh my gosh this is perfect this is my character and then I go from there um, so for the because the mystic series is the first book that I've done where it's a fantasy but it's set in the modern world um, I mean I've written some long ago but this is like the first actual one that I've written that's fairly decent um, I uh, have made a special board for it there's my character ideas one it's all artwork um, I made another board called character ideas modern I think I might have passed it character ideas modern um, my characters modern is a board of characters I've already invented and all of this is just the mystic series because that's the only one that's actually been in there so character ideas modern is the board I need to go to because this is where I pinned all the ideas I have 750 of them of characters that hey this might be cool this might be cool this might be cool and so on and so forth so this is where I go um, and I'll take you guys through the process of how I invent characters and that's what we're going to be focusing on so, for my character um, inventing process, basically, I look at pictures on Pinterest and I basically go until I get a good idea. Um, I'll give you guys an example. Um, okay, let's do this kid. Um, he looks to be, pr I mean, I'm terrible at guessing ages, but, you know, 11, 10, 11 years old. Whoops. I hate it with my phone. So, 10, 11 years old. He's a little boy. Um, so... I'm getting, I just look and I see, okay, what kind of feeling am I getting from this character? What kind of person could he be? And I look at the picture and let it kind of dictate and let it help me figure out who this character is. So I see this little boy and I think he's actually could be just a boy. Um, he's probably, I think he's going to be an only child. Um, he has two parents who love him very, very much. And his parents are actually... Let's make them some sort of a mystic, um, probably some kind of lycanthrope. I'm thinking either wear bears or wear cats. And they haven't told him who they are, and they get rounded up by government agents, basically. And he's kind of left um, alone. They take him to, and uh, they test him to see if he's got if he is a mystic or not, and he doesn't have the effects of mystics, um, simply because he is a hybrid. I'm thinking one of his parents might be a vampire, and the other one might be a human, so he's actually a half-breed. I know I said he might be a lycanthrope, but I'm changing it. Um, like I said, the characters change and develop as they go on. So his family was rounded up, his mother or his father, I think I'm going to make his mother a vampire. She was a vampire. She was taken by the government, locked in a facility. They tested him and his father, found out his father was human and that he's a half-breed. Um, now with half-breed vampires, actually she can't be a vampire mother because they can't have kids. So the father has to be the vampire. The mother's the human. Reverse that. But either way, so the father gets rounded up, him and the mother are tested, they test, they're human. Um, Half-breeds, it really just depends, they can come out with any traits of vampires or none at all, blah blah blah. So he ages like a normal human, silver doesn't affect him or anything, and he has, so far he hasn't developed any senses or extra abilities that the vampires have. Um, so when they both come out clean, they basically, the mother gets in trouble for the fact that she was married to a vampire and stuff. But he has no idea what's going on, so this is kind of like an overwhelming thing in his life that's in place that he doesn't really understand and it's kind of crushing him and it really just kind of rocks his whole world so that's that kid um now i so basically what i do when i pin it is he's now one of my characters um so basically i'll do dad is a vamp mom oops, 
mom is a human, dad rounded up, mom and him are tested, mom gets, gets in trouble for being with dad. He's human, oops, he's husband, I don't know what that was, human, that's his whole Um, let's name him Max. He looks like a good Max character. So from then, since he's my character, character, he's named, he's got a backstory. Um, I go to my board. Like I said, I have a lot of boards. My character's modern. As soon as it decides to pin. So save to my character's modern. And then I just go back and I keep doing this whole process for anybody who looks kind of inspiring to me. Um... So, it's basically just, like, a process and stuff. I kind of like this guy. He definitely looks like a mystic. I'm thinking he's going to be a lone wolf. Um, sometimes they're more detailed than others. Other times I just get, like, a vague idea, and then I go on my computer and sort of type out what feeling I get from him. Lone wolf in camp. And that's where I... Um, let's name him. Um, Daron. That looks like a good. Um, so he seems like he's going to be one of my prominent new characters in the camp. Um, we need some regular guys, regular people to be workers at the camp. So, um, some of these characters I've already pinned as act my actual characters and stuff, but um, I tried to pin a lot of different diverse people because I really wanted people from like all over the world and stuff. Um, but so some of these people I'm not stopping because I've already made them like my official characters and stuff. Um, see like with this guy, I've already, sometimes I just edit their thing in here and then leave that alone. Oops. Sometimes I edit their uh, description in here and don't actually pin them to my characters yet because I don't have them named or anything. But, uh, so he, this guy is a Chinese male jinn. He's ancient and powerful. He was an emperor, and he's now highly respected in the council. In the last book, I was, um, playing around with the idea of a mystic council, but that idea never really came into the book. So, um, like I said, largest werewolf pack. She's the alpha female. Gargoyle to the black Valkyrie representative. Um... Like I said, some of these are just very... Um, let's do her. I think she's going to be one of my vampires. Um, let's edit her, actually. Okay. Um, I don't... I'm not going to name her yet because I have to actually research, depending on what era she was created in. Like, say she was from ancient Greece. Um, I'm going to have to look up ancient Greek names for girls and name her then. So, for now, I'm just going to edit her description. Oops, I don't want to send that to anybody. So, we... Um, edit her description. Um, I think she's going to be an ancient vampire um, from first century sometime. I kind of like the idea of a Greek person, but she looks darker skinned. I don't know if Greeks were actually dark skinned or not. Um, so she kind of, I already have an ancient Egyptian. Um, so hmm, she maybe can be from first century or maybe she's like could have been from from Africa, like a Nubian tribe. So um, she's in the camp. She's one of the people who oops, who gets interviewed. So, um, anyways, this is just my process. This is actually just a particular process that I had um, with the Mystic series, Bloodless Secrets, Unveiled Truths, and then um, now this third book. So, everybody has a different process, and usually I actually have a different process for, like, every thing, character that I make and stuff. So, um, that's it for today. Be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and that it helps you inventing your own characters for your own stories and stuff. So, um, I don't know when I'll have part two out, but just keep on the lookout, and in the meantime, um, thank you for everything, and just thank you for watching, and just be sure to subscribe.